Father, we come tonight and we do thank you and praise you for this evening. We thank you for blessing us, Father, and we thank you for being with us. We thank you just for the beautiful weather, and we just we do ask you tonight, Father, to be with the many that are on our, not only just on our list, but on our hearts tonight, Father. We just ask you to touch them and help them and just to save them tonight, Father. Just send something or somebody their way, Father, that can share the gospel. Use us, Father, to be your witness to everyone we comes into contact with. Bless this service tonight, Father. Bless this offering. Guide us and help us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
said he'll never make it. He'll never see it through. But they don't know what keeps me going. Lord, I guess they've never met you. And oh, my life was in shambles. Till the day you came along. my tears into laughter yes Lord and you gave me a brand new song thank you Jesus and I'm still holding on Lord I'll never let you go and you gave me touch my heart, you touch my soul, and the bridges that's behind me, Lord, I'll burn them to the ground, and I'm still holding on to the best thing I ever found, only by His word. Touch my heart, you touch my soul, and the bridges that's behind me. Lord, I'll burn them to the ground. I'm still holding on to the best thing I ever found. that's behind me Lord I'll burn them to the ground and I'm still holding on to the best thing I ever found
Tonight, turn your Bibles to Matthew, the book of Matthew. Think about that. <laughs> you wouldn't have thought we'd be there. But tonight, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 25. So we're moving forward. We've only got a few more chapters left. I don't know what we're going to do after that. There's only 65 other books of the Bible, so I think we'll find some material somewhere. But, but we're going to be looking at the first 13 verses of Matthew 25 tonight. And um, the title is up there, Are You Out of All? Um, and I'm not talking about that kind of oil, but are you out of the oil? We're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. We're going to be talking about that kind of oil tonight. And we're going to do it in the context of this parable that Jesus is going to be telling his disciples and the people. He, um, it's just, he's continuing the same thing as what we've been talking about last week and then this morning about being ready and about, uh, about looking and watching and all these things that he's been talking about. And, um, and he's got this parable. Now, apparently these people weren't listening. I, I, I think a lot of times um, I, I really see no difference in human behavior 2,000 years ago and today. You know, we've got different kinds of technology and different things like that. But basic human behavior is the same. And, and what I look at when I see this is these people must be very stubborn, hard-headed. Because I'm going to tell you, these people were not dumb. They didn't, get, they, they didn't just not get what Jesus was saying because they couldn't understand. They just were refusing to listen. And I think we're, in our world today, we've got a lot of people. People in this world are not dumb by any, any means. 
Um, now, there are some people that are uneducated, but for the most part, people aren't dumb. They just refuse to listen. They refuse to hear what the truth is. They, they want to make up their own narrative, want to make up their own truth about things, and they refuse to hear what the actual truth is and, and refuse to hear about God. They don't want to hear about God. They want to hear about all these other things going on and all these religions and all this and all that, but they don't want to hear about God, and they don't want to hear about the true way to heaven. They, and they, they've, just, they've made up their own mind of what they're going to do. And, and it's the same. There's no difference here. And that's why when we're reading through this, we kind of see Jesus almost saying the same thing over and over and over and over again because he's trying to drive home that point. And, 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 and in any church, you, you have to pretty much do the same thing. You've got to drive home the point. And it's, and it's, you know, because you never know who's ready and who's not ready. I mean, we just don't. I don't know who out here is ready and who's not ready. I hope all of you is ready. If you ain't, you can get ready tonight. I mean, that's, and that's just the, the truth of it. And, and when we begin to look at all these things, and, and it really doesn't matter how many lessons, uh, Sunday school lessons Robert teaches, it don't matter how many sermons I preach, um, us being ready to meet God always has to take first priority over everything else. Us being ready and us trying to help other people be ready. You know, or we have a, we've got a job to do. You know, and that's why I think on Sunday nights, uh, a lot of times, you know, most of the people here at least claim to be Christians. I'm, I'll just be, I'll go out of limb and say you all are Christians here tonight. Because if you weren't, you weren't going to be here on a Sunday night most of the time. And, and, you know, there may be some things that, are, that, that you need to work out. But for the most part, people that come to church on Sunday nights are Christians. That's just that's the fact of the matter. But there's still a job for us to do. There's still things for us to learn and for us to go out and share the gospel. You know, all the things that, uh, that, that we talk about up here and on Wednesday nights and on Sunday school and all those things is to prepare people to go out and share that with other people. But we hoard those things up a lot of times and we don't want to share. And then this is no different because Jesus wants us. Jesus wants everybody in this room to be out there telling somebody, you better be ready. You better be getting ready. And you better be ready because he's coming. And that's what he wants us telling people. And that's why we go through all these things. But tonight, he's going to be looking at, at, at some of the reasons why people aren't ready and some of the reasons why people can't stay ready. You know that you can be ready and then not be ready? You ever seen somebody that they was ready to go? But then maybe a year or two years later, they're definitely not ready. Well, it's because of what Jesus is going to talk about here tonight. And a lot of the times the reason people end up in that kind of situation is they tried to get ready on their own. They forgot and left God out of the equation. Now see, it's just like what I talked about this morning. We can't get ready on our own. It is impossible. We can't do this on our own. It takes God. It takes the Holy Spirit. You know, and I talked about this morning, I talked about Jesus. A lot of people will claim Jesus as their Savior, but they won't ever claim Him as their Lord because they refuse to submit to Him. They refuse to give everything to Him to make Him their, their Master, their all in all, their Lord. And you know, we call Him Lord and Savior for a reason. But I think we've lost, we've lost a lot of that. We need to get it back. Because that's the only way we're going to endure, like we talked about last week. That's only we got to watch and we got to be, we got to recognize when the Holy Spirit's speaking to us, and we and it's more than just recognize. We've got to respond to what He's telling us. The Holy Spirit says, "Do something, do it." But what would oh, I don't want to do that. Nope, I ain't going to do that. Nope, sorry, can't do that. All these excuses, you know, and we fall short in that because I think there's a lot of time. A lot of times that people will come and ask forgiveness. Some of it's just because they got a guilty conscience in the moment. Some of it, they truly mean it, but we fall short of making him our all in all. By walking in the Spirit. You know, we, when, we're, when we're made new, you know, we're reborn, we're made new, we're babes in Christ. Well, we're not, we're not designed to be, remain babies forever. And we got a bunch of Christian babies running around. They've never grown up in the Word. Jesus says, grow up in the Lord. Actually, Paul said that. Grow up in the Lord. Grow up in Christ. He also said, we're not to, we're not to, we're to eat the meat, not, not, not just on the milk. We've got a lot of people on the milk that can't handle the meat. Don't want the meat. 
Because the meat gets hard. It gets hard to do some of these things. We don't want to do that, but we're not, so, we're not designed that way. You know, think about a baby. When a baby's born, what do they do? They grow. They grow up. Hopefully. Some, we got some big babies, too, running around. <laughs> but they grow up physically, and we're just supposed to grow up spiritually. And that's, and that's really, it's all ties back into what Jesus is talking about here. And he's going to do so. He's going to talk about it in the context of these ten virgins. Which I know it's, uh, you all have probably heard this passage before. I may have, I think I've even preached from it before. They all run together, to be honest with you, after a while. But he says this. I want to read Matthew chapter 25, starting in verse 1. I'm read the first 13 verses. It says, At that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with the lamps. And it says the, uh, the bridegroom was a long time in coming. And they all became drowsy and fell asleep. The preacher was long-winded and they all got sleepy and fell asleep. No, I don't say that. And it says at midnight... The cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. It says, then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. It says, the foolish one said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there might not be enough oil for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourself. He says, but while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived says, the virgins who were ready went, went, went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. says, later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch. This is the warning. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Same thing from this morning. Keep watch. You do not know the day or the hour. Father, we come, and I thank you once more for blessing us and being with us. And uh, just, I just praise you tonight, Father. I ask that you just open us all up to receive your word. Help me with this tonight, Father. Anoint, anoint this word, Father, and let it go forth. Let us not receive it only, but let us use it, apply it to our lives. Help us, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So, Jesus is trying to get them to understand the importance of this situation. The, 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 the seriousness of it is really what he's, gotta, he's trying to get them to, to look at. And remember, the last thing we talked about this morning was this, this servant, this wicked servant is what he called him, the one that, that was trying to kind of skirt around his responsibilities. He was trying to, um, he was going to, yeah, I guess he was just going to wait the master out. He was going to wait. You know, he said he went in, abused the other servants and did all these things, thinking the master wasn't coming back and the master wasn't going to do anything. And he had all this time in the world. And Jesus ended that, he says, keep Keep watch because you don't know when it's going to happen. But they didn't keep watch because Jesus has to keep going. He has to keep telling them. They weren't paying attention. So he tells them this about ten virgins. Half of them were ready to go. Half of them weren't ready to go. It's as simple as that. Now the wicked servant was wicked, evil, sinful. The ungodly, these ten virgins, it doesn't say anything special about them other than just half were ready and half weren't. So they were just normal, ordinary people, people you would see out on the street every day. Nothing out of the ordinary. You wouldn't be able to tell them from anybody else. They weren't out here uh, living like this un un ungodly servant. They were just normal people. And the point Jesus is trying to make with this is you don't have to be vile and evil and a murderer and all these things to miss out on heaven. You just have to not be ready. That's all he's trying to say. You just, you're just not ready. And Jesus says, 
At that time, again, the, the kingdom of heaven be like these ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five were foolish and five were wise. And the reason the five were foolish, it says, the foolish ones took their lamps but didn't take any oil with them. And the wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. And that we got to look at the Jewish tradition here. You remember a couple of weeks ago we talked about the wedding supper and how great and glorious an event that was? Oh, everybody looked forward to it. It was, it was an honor to get invited to that. Well, this is just going back to that same thing. And he's talking about bridegrooms and, and bridesmaids. And, and the bridesmaids in those days were different than they are today. See, today it's just anybody that's a family friend, those kinds of things, be a bridesmaid. Well, in those days, you notice it says ten virgins. These were the bridesmaids. They had never been married. And, and it could be family or friends or whatever, but it was, it was young women who were not married yet. And see, the thing was, and the tradition was, is, is when the wedding took place, the groom would go down, and, and he would take his party, and they would go down to the bride's house, and they would pick her up, and then they would have this long procession, the parade, and then they would go back to his house, and then they would go in and have the wedding supper, the marriage supper. It was a great banquet. And then the bridesmaid, though, they would pick them up on the way back to his house. And everybody go in and they'd have this great party. And the deal thing it was with them, why they all looked forward to this was because these bridesmaids, it, it was kind of like, you know, all, everybody was all lovey-dovey. You know, you get everybody's all, men's all lovey-dovey and everybody's all, and all that stuff. Well, it's that kind of idea. And they thought, well, maybe we go to this wedding supper, we'll meet us a man and we'll get married too. So everybody's all excited and happy. All, everybody's all in love and all that stuff. But, you see, there was no time frame on when the bridegroom was going to come by. It could be an hour, a day. There was just no time frame on it whatsoever. It could be any amount of time. It could even be in the middle of the night. And if he came in the middle of the night, guess what? You had to get him and go because they, were, they weren't going to stop. They were just going to keep on going because sometimes they had a long walk. And they walked back then. Oh, they may have rode a donkey or two, but most, they walked. They didn't have, if it was in the middle of the night, they didn't have cars with headlights. They didn't have flashlights. They didn't even have streetlights. Nero hadn't started hanging Christians up at streetlights yet. They had nothing. It would have been dark, completely dark. The only thing they had, I wish I had a thought to bring one, like a lantern, is an oil lamp. That's all they had was that lamp with oil on it. And, you know, they, you know, you all have seen them. I mean, they weren't exactly like what we have, but, but, you know, they only hold so much oil. And if you go or if you're going a long way, you're going to run out of oil. And if you run out of oil, you're going to be walking around in the dark. So what do we need to do? We need to bring extra oil so that we're not walking around in the dark. And number one point, we shouldn't be walking around in the dark. We should walk in the light as he is in the light. We should always be walking in his light. He is the one that lights our path and, and, make, and opens it up so that we can see. You see, we know Jesus is the bridegroom. So when Jesus comes by, he should see us lit up and ready to go. And that's what he's talking about here. So this all, this all he's talking about, this extra all. You see, the all is represented of what? Anybody know? The Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You know, when we anoint people with oil and pray for them, we're, we're, it's a symbol of the Holy Spirit covering them and touching them. And we're to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is to live in us and work through us. And, 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 we're to, and it's not just, come, you know, I said it this morning, it's not just one time, come get filled and go on with your life. It's a constant filling and refilling of the Holy Spirit. Because if we neglect the Spirit, guess what? We start to run out of oil. We start to run out of energy. You ever seen somebody that gets saved, you know, and they get sanctified at first time? Woo! And they're all fire, all excited. And then, whew, fizzle out. It's because they neglected the Spirit. They neglected to come back. They neglected to, to be refilled over and over and over again to stay full of the Spirit. And they ran out of energy. 
Because when the Spirit runs out, guess who's left to, to pick up the slack? You are. You think you can do it? No. Think I can do it? No. No. Only the Spirit. And so he's saying, be careful. Be careful. And see, the difference between the wise and the foolish is the wise realize that they can't do it and realize they need the Spirit and they seek the Spirit constantly in their lives. Foolish don't. They just go about their own way. It's, all, it's enough for me. Sometimes they get scared. Spirit causes you to do some things that will scare you. Woo. You know, it says we'll be bold. Proclaim the gospel, proclaim the word boldly. Some people don't want to be bold. They don't like being out of control. Guess what? You ain't in control, no way. We may think we are, but we're not in control. And I would much rather God be in control than the devil. So think about it that way. But this is why. This is one reason. He says here in verse 5, he says, The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. It was a long time in coming. Oh, where's Jesus at? He's been coming for a thousand years. Where is he at? Quit watching. Became drowsy. Got weak. Got weary. Got complacent like we talked about this morning. Drowsy. Everybody been so sleepy they just can't hold their eyes open. Yeah. I tell Michelle sometimes my eyes are getting sleepy. Said, my eyes are getting sleepy. It's time to go to bed. They've been so tired. So tired. And just quit watching. But can't watch. Because again, we don't know when he's going to show up. We don't know when the bridegroom is going to come by. And it says this, at midnight, at midnight, a cry rang out. Here's the bridegroom, come and meet him. And man, when he said that, woo, it's like, here's the bridegroom. Woo, everybody's excited because it's time to go to the party. So everybody jumps up and everybody's ready then. Oh, everybody's ready. You see, so, you know, when, when things are real exciting and going on real exciting in the church, everybody's all, woo. But when it's just a regular old day, sing a song. That that right that go. You see him people walking in the truck. Or walking like this. Like they've just been drugged through the mud for two hours. Man, we should always be excited about the Lord. Because he's coming back for us. He's coming back for each and every person in here. He's coming back. But they're ready and they jump in. Woo! And they, it says they woke up and they trimmed their lamps. They got their lamps ready to go, lit them up. And it says, uh-oh, uh-oh, we got a problem. The foolish ones, it says to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. In other words, give us some of your anointing. Give us some of the Holy Spirit you got. And, and I've heard people say this. Oh, I want, the, I want his anointing. I want this. I want that. No, you don't. It don't belong to you. God gave that anointing to that person. That's how God anointed them. And God has an anointing for you that's completely different. But if you're, you only realize it when you submit to God. Different people have different roles and God anoints them to do different things. And you ain't going to make it on somebody else's anointing either. You ain't going to make it to heaven because your granny or your papa was a Christian or your mama or your daddy. You ain't going to make it because you came to church. Right. Them people can't save you. The church can't save you. Jesus Christ is the only person that can save you. Amen. And these people are like, oh, give us some of your oil. That's stupid. It don't work that way. Oh, I, I get aggravated. <laughs> People need to realize that God has a special anointing for each one of them. 
And we're stiff-necked. We don't want to realize that. We see somebody, Woo, I wish I was like them. No, 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 no. God has a special plan for you. And if you will let God fulfill that plan, you will see people saved, you will see people sanctified, you will see people delivered. And it won't be the same people for me and you because we all are different. That's the beauty of why God made us this way. That's also why we can't get along. Because we're not full of the Spirit and we are all so different. Now, if everybody was full of the Holy Spirit in every single church, in every single denomination, I don't even know if we'd have denominations here. Probably not. Uh, but everybody would get along. Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine a whole group of people that got along all the time. It's hard to imagine, isn't it? That's what heaven's going to be like. There ain't going to be none of that. Got to go to the throne room today. I want to praise God a little bit today. Won't be none of that. It won't be none of this fake stuff either on Sunday. Woo! And the rest of the guy, you know, people shake their fists. The one on Sunday, it's like this, but the rest of the week, it's like that. They forget to open that hand back up. It's not going to be like that. And he said, and that's why they said, no. This is verse 9. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both of us. There ain't enough for both of us. There's plenty. God's going to give plenty. God has plenty, but he ain't going to give you half of yours and, and somebody else half of yours. He wants to give you all of yours. Everything you can handle, he wants to give it to you. Whatever you can receive, he wants to give it to you. And the same thing for this person over here. But he ain't going to split it up. There's plenty to go around. But it says there may not be enough for both of us. Instead, you go and buy your own. Get your own anointed. Get filled with the Spirit yourself. Find Jesus yourself. Find the Holy Spirit yourself. You can't have mine. Because it won't work. But they procrastinate. You're seeing they procrastinate? I call them toe dabblers. They get to feeling a little guilty, and then they say, well, I better go to church, learn a few things. But they just dabble. They'll, they'll come and say, stick that toe in the water. You know, I do that when we go, when we go anywhere on vacation, and Michelle wants me to go swimming. I don't swim a lot. Cause of water, and it's not because I don't like to swim. I love to swim. The water's too cold. But I will. I'll take my toe. Nope. And I'll go sit down. <laughs> yeah. But that's what they do. They'll come to church and stick that toe in their dub, and they'll just sit there for a while, thinking that saying somebody else's anointing, somebody else's spirit's going to rub off on them or something. That ain't going to work. It's not going to work. Or you're going to have a group of people that when Jesus comes back and gets his people, what, you know what's going to happen? Every church in America is going to be full, and we ain't going to be here to see it. This church will be busting the walls out. But it'll be too late. It'll be too late. Because they procrastinated. It says this. Let me read the scripture. It says, but while they were on their way to buy the oil, while they were getting ready, because they procrastinated, waited until the last minute, the bridegroom arrived. And the virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. He shut the door. Left out in the cold. And this is where the people that are going to start coming to church after Jesus has done come and gone, this is where they come in. It says, later the others also came. Sir, sir, open the door for us. Let us in. Oh, we didn't believe it then. You know, that we remember we talked about the days of Noah this morning. We didn't believe it then, but we believe it now. Well, yeah, you believe it now. But it's too late. He opened the door for us. And he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. I don't know you. Think what it would be like if God looked at you and says, I don't know you. Ooh. Ooh. It's too late. And then the warning comes again. 
Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or hour. Don't go out here trying to predict it. Don't go out here trying to do your mathematical calculations. Don't go out here and listen to these nuts that are trying to predict it. Don't worry about that stuff because it's going to happen. It's a promise of God. It's going to happen because he's already seen it, already, already set it out there. Just be aware that it's coming and be ready for it when it does. It's as simple as that. But are we? Are we? Right now, in this place, of life, are we ready? Same question I asked this morning, are we ready? If you're not, get ready. Get ready. Because he's coming. Do you know people in your family that are not ready? I would say every single person in this room knows at least one person that's not ready. And if there's nobody in your family that's not ready, praise the Lord. But there's people out here that are definitely not ready. People we see every single day, what are we doing about it? Are, are, we, are we sharing the urgency of it with them? Are we sharing the fact that you better be ready? Now, I would not advise you to walk up to somebody on the street and, and, and say, are you ready to meet Jesus? Because if you did that, they may just let you meet him. Because they may take it the wrong way. It says, love your neighbor as yourself, but tell them the truth in love. And if you're walking in the Spirit, and it's the Spirit telling you, you'll know what to say, you'll know what to do. But are we doing it? That's the thing. I'm going to get Michelle. Michelle, do you care to find us a song or something back there? I'm going to ask you all. Y'all are more than welcome to come up here and pray. You can pray right there at your seat where you're at, but I would like everybody just to bow your heads. And what I want you to do is, if you're not ready, I want you to pray. In fact, if you're not ready, raise your hand and I will come and pray with you. But what I want you to do, if you're ready and good to go, I want you to find some people that come to your heart and your mind that are not ready. And I want you to pray for them. I want you to lift them up to God tonight. And when I feel like everybody's done praying, I'll dismiss us and we'll be done. But spend time in the Lord tonight. Father God, we come tonight and we do thank you and praise you this evening. We give you all glory in this place tonight and we just do ask you, Father, to be with our families and friends and all the people, Father, that we know, Father, that need to know you. We ask you to touch them tonight, Father. I ask you to be with each person that's here tonight, Father. Open our hearts, Father, to your will, Father. Help us to seek after a deeper walk with you. Take us out of this place, but not out of your presence. We thank you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.